Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be looking at the triangular strangle or the triangle choke, one of the most famous moves done in grappling. You see it from the white belt level all the way up to the world championships in judo and jiu-jitsu and even MMA, of course. And today we're going to be looking at the men that contributed to this great uh, technique. You're going to see that it is several people feeding off the inventions of others or the improvements of others to create one of the most lethal and yet aesthetically pleasing techniques. So when we want to talk about the triangle choke, we cannot but talk about these two figures here in front of you. The first one on the left side is Kanemitsu Yaichibe. I've discussed him multiple times and he is credited for techniques such as the knee bar. And here you see the triangle choke. But the figure that is underneath his shadow is his student. You see on the right, Masaru Hayakawa. So Masaru Hayakawa was very young when he started to work on it. He was, I believe, 17 years old only. Um, he saw his brother fight a great fight the year prior to 1921. And he vowed to avenge his brother because his brother did not win. I believe he tied. But uh, at the time, there was the team of Oda Tsunetane that was the dominant force in the Kosen uh, Taikai realm or the competitions. So uh, he vowed to dethrone Oda. And so he started to work on the triangle choke. And with his teacher, the help of his teacher, you see here on the left, they uh, came up with the front variation. So the one that you see from guard, as we say, is the one that Hayakawa worked and crafted. So he is not only a judoka, but also went on to be a businessman in the Mitsubishi mining. So he has a great life and career. So here you see in the book Shinshiki Judo, published in 1926, which translates to new style of judo. You can see Hayakawa in 1926 being fourth degree black belt and his Uke uh, Hirano also fourth degree black belt. I love how, just how well detailed this book is. It explains everything in terms of hooking the back of your knee with the ankle and also pushing the arm away from you into the lower part of your abdomen and how to squeeze and finish off the strangle. It's not like those uh, early 20th century books where they just show you the photo and they just throw in a description. That's not the case in this book. It is very well detailed just to show that from the 1920s and even prior, but of course the printing and the resources to create these detailed uh, information books, it was very limited. So it is very important to know that these people at that time paid a great deal to details uh, in order to perfect these techniques. So again, 1926, uh, you have this high level uh, technique and sophistication, which is very uh, refreshing. So uh, you see him here, Hayakawa himself uh, performing it. And uh, you can see it, he is grabbing onto the arm. He is very well adjusted, turning a little bit to the side to finish off the strangle. So uh, before I discuss other variations, it's very important to discuss this. So uh, a lot of people theorize that the front triangle choke that we just saw comes from this, the katajime or the shoulder strangle, but um, there is no sufficient evidence to tie the two. However, it is very possible. This is from the book my Method of Judo by Kawaishi. So this was uh, published decades later, I believe in the 1950s, but uh, at the time uh, when uh, Kawaishi left, he had a great deal of resources with him. So if something is published in the 50s, it doesn't mean that it was invented in the 50s. Obviously, this covers a great deal of techniques, so many of them that in the days where a lot of techniques were uh, allowed, like wrist locks, foot locks, so many variations of leg locks you can find in this book. 
uh, even as much as the heel hook. So uh, a lot of people theorize that it might have come from this as a primitive form of triangle choke, like a scissor that holds both the head and the arm. It is possible. Is it 100% uh, sure or accurate? I'm not sure, but it is a possible theory. So this one here you see in front of you, it's the triangle choke from the back. Um, this, uh, you can see here Hitomi performing it. Also the same book, uh, the new style of judo, 1926. Um, this one here, it explains two th scenarios. The first one being you are in uh, Kami, Shiho, Gatame, and as they shrimp and try to escape, this is when you roll over and you catch them with this um, triangle choke. The other one is as you are getting into the pin, uh, they roll away or turn away or try to escape your pin. You can also catch them uh, with this uh, back variation of the triangle uh, choke. So let's see it here a little bit in action. Um, this is a standard demonstration by the Kodokan. So as you see, you are from the back and you catch the shoulder, arm and the head and create a triangle with your legs and you squeeze the adductors and you can get it. So you can get it from all sorts of ways. Maybe you are um, trying to faint with a strangle and then you get the arm. Now, the final one, which is the Yoko Sankaku or the side triangle. Uh, it is believed to have been added later on, just a few years later by here, this man, Oda Tsunetane, uh, which is the last edition or addition, I'm sorry, to triangle choke. So you had the front and the back. And of course, they started doing it from the mount. But these are the two basic ones that really ushered everything else. And then later on, uh, Oda added the side variation, which is the most prominent one you see in judo today, which gets you into this particular pin where you can actually strangle or just hold uh, the pin. So a lot of people turtle in judo to avoid uh, either being thrown or to get pinned. And from there you can enter this side variation uh, easily. So uh, the triangle choke is again, like I said, one of the best uh, techniques out there. One of my favorites, um, one of the, those techniques that I often uh, resort to when I'm doing Neiwaza in training, but um, you can see here how it evolved through different stages, many people uh, contributing to it. And it's very important to share this knowledge and documenting it. Otherwise you will not evolve and otherwise uh, you're just creating a monopoly on information and that's not only unethical but also just uh, will halt everything not just martial arts but everything else so here you can see uh, another variation being done I believe Shibayama and he is doing it from the mount position so if you have anything else to add please let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon for exclusive content I just want to thank all the new patrons that have recently uh, decided to support my work. I'm very thankful. Thank you.